Venerable, we can see in other religions that meditation is not as important as in Buddhism. And even in Christianity they say that the devil makes work for idle hands. So why do Buddhists meditate? Well, this is a good question and it's a question which is very important for Buddhism too. Uh, the expression you use, the devil makes work for idle hands, usually has the interpretation that instead of sitting quietly with your eyes closed, you could be spending your time much more usefully to go out and help the people of the world, the poor and the needy, and that somehow it is lazy or maybe selfish to be sitting and doing nothing for hours at a time. But in Buddhism, you have to remember that the way in which we can improve ourselves as a person and to become better as a person and to move towards enlightenment or our own salvation must come entirely through our own efforts. We cannot rely on an outside agency or deity to come and to bestow our enlightenment on us. Every improvement in our own life has to come from what we are practicing for ourselves. So meditation is one of the ways in which Buddhists practice in order to uplift the quality of the mind. When we talk about the mind in Buddhism, we're not talking about our brain or our nervous system, but we're talking about the sense of awareness or maybe the emotions and the mental capacities which we have, all of which need to be worked with in order to purify them. In Buddhism, we give a particular amount of importance to the mind, even though it's something we can't see, even though it's something that we can't touch, but yet it's the mind which drives all the other things that we say and do, whether they are good or bad, it always depends on our mind. And because our actions are so important for the law of karma and the future which we have for ourselves, then it's crucial that we find ways in order to improve the quality of the mind. And the main way which that can be done is by dealing with the mind directly. And meditation offers us a way to do that. Sitting for long hours of the day, contemplating one's navel, as it's sometimes called in a derogatory way, in fact has a very important purpose in order to let the sediments of the mind settle out, to precipitate out so that the mind can become clearer. Because there are many sorts of knowledge in the world but the sort of knowledge which can actually transform ourselves for the better has to come from a mind that is still and a mind that is free of thought. So sometimes it does take a lot of practice in meditation for the mind to come to a state where wisdom can arise. And it's this wisdom which really allows us to understand the world on a deeper level, a way which we cannot learn from books or from hearing uh, sermons, for example, but something which has to come from our internal understanding. So in Buddhism we do give a lot of importance to meditation because we see it as the only way in order to come back in touch with this wisdom which we have inside ourselves but normally we are unable to bring out and to use just rather like an underground well which you need to dig down deep enough in order to be able to use the waters in the wells for something useful in the same way although we have wisdom inside us but we do need to make the efforts in meditation so that we can actually uh, bring that wisdom into our lives and it will be useful for us and will bring us eventually towards uh, enlightenment and salvation in the footsteps of the Lord Buddha. We notice that even the Lord Buddha himself had to meditate. So if we are following in his footsteps, then we also have to follow his example in uh, being serious about meditation. <laughs> Venerable, is it okay that we make up our own method to meditate or do we have to follow some basic rules to meditate? Again, for meditation there are many different ways to meditate and in some ways you could say that there is a huge choice of different ways in which you can meditate. Usually if people are very creative and they want to make up their own way of meditating, in fact this is possible, but 
first, before they make up their method, they have to know the basic guidelines, because meditation has right ways and wrong ways of doing it. Some forms of meditation, if you do it wrongly, I'm afraid to say that it may cause you some mental upset. Uh, some people have been known uh, to hypnotize themselves, some people have gone into meditation and never come out again. These are examples of people who think they are practicing meditation, but in fact they are doing some mental practice which didn't follow the proper guidelines. So if you are interested in meditation, even if you want to make up your own technique, but you should be cautious because doing meditation in the wrong way may lead to results which you are not expecting. So what are the sort of guidelines which we should be looking at? In Buddhism, for example, there are about 40 different sorts of meditation. But what we notice about these forms of meditation is that although they are different with respect to the mental object which is used, but all of them use the same place to focus, which is on the inside of the body rather than on the outside. So the first rule, if you like to have rules or guidelines about meditation, is that whatever you focus on, it should be within the space of your own body. The second guideline which is useful to know about, and this doesn't depend on what mental object you use, is that there are two main things which you need to overcome in the mind in order that your mind become calmer. The first thing is the tendency of the mind to wander, whereby the mind tends to be distracted by things outside the body. The second tendency is for the mind to be filled up with a lot of thoughts. So whatever sort of meditation you practice, you should make sure that you have elements in your meditation practice which will help you to deal with both of these tendencies of the mind. That is, something which will help you overcome the distractions and also something which will help you to overcome the thoughts. For meditation in general, to overcome distraction, you do need something to focus on in your mind. So that thing may be the breath, it may be a mental object, it may be a sound, it may be a part of your body, but you do need to have something. There are some forms of meditation which are generally called uh, guided imagination, where you sit and imagine a sunset on a beach somewhere, as if you are on the beach yourself. And for such uh, guided imaginary tours, it's difficult to know where you are focusing your mind. So there may be some element of uh, danger in that sort of practice. You may end up hypnotizing yourself instead of uh, bringing your mind to a higher state or a more quality state. So it's useful to have something to focus on. This is the first, uh, second guideline I should t talk about for whatever sort of meditation you're doing. The third guideline is that you do need to deal with your thoughts. If the more you meditate, the more you think, then you may end up with a headache at the end of your meditation or even a migraine. So it's important that you have a way to deal with the thoughts in your mind. Meditation is not about sitting and mulling over thoughts or sitting and trying to uh, invent uh, the next major uh, breakthrough in, in the science world, for example. It's about letting your mind go empty, empty of thoughts, that is. And in order that your mind becomes free of thoughts, sometimes it's necessary to use some sort of word or verbal input in your meditation, which in technical terms we call the use of a mantra. And if you have a mantra which you're repeating to yourself, whether it's Sama Arahang or perhaps the word Buddho or maybe some other word in the Buddhist language of your choice, then this will help to keep away the thoughts until such time as your mind does become calmer. Apart from that, you can be inventive in your meditation. You can change the object of meditation, that doesn't make much difference. You can even change the place in your body where you focus, if that makes you happier. You can change the place where you meditate, you can change the time when you meditate, you can change the posture with which you meditate, but these three rules, the rules about keeping your mind internal and dealing with the distractions and the thoughts, they are universal guidelines. So, although you may invent all the other parts, but you shouldn't skip these three things.